right, so now we're taking a look at how just how big the coverage area is here. And it looks like all of the surrounding neighborhoods just surrounding the airport have been included. Some very nice high quality resolution photo real terrain as well. I can tell you getting, uh, just talking with various developers within the community. Is it still too loud? Jeez, am I going to have to just turn off the sound altogether? It's like the Tour de France, you know, for some reason when you when you switch to the helicopter views, you can still hear the, hear the helicopter and sometimes you wonder why uh, is there a speaker on the helicopter to hear the helicopter running, but, um, you know, it, it sort of makes sense to have it. But let's see, I turned it down just a little bit more. Hopefully that's going to be a little bit better. Definitely a very large coverage area. Now, I don't have any AI in here yet. Um, the last AI I went to install was the ICE AI, and I'm not blaming ICE, but then all of a sudden, I had a virus. So, uh, <laughs> not sure what happened there, but uh, I will continue to look into uh, ICE AI in the future. So at the moment, all of my world of AI traffic is gone. And now, quite naturally, this is a very big coverage area, and I'm sure many of you will want to go in and explore Copenhagen on your own. But uh, I'd like to just take a quick look at some of these interesting uh, buildings that they have over here in this sort of business district. I really appreciate how everything is just so perfectly stacked, and even when you look at the quality of the houses in Autogen, it's definitely very fitting for the area. Very fitting. So everything actually looks the way it does in real life. If you look at the post that I made, um, the initial post, when uh, I think I posted the exclusive screenshots, I posted a uh, link to a website uh, that, that has a lot of overview pictures and things of the area. And when I compared that to the screenshots, there was almost no difference. <laughs> in fact, I almost thought the real life screenshots were part of the scenery part. So that's just how good everything looks. I mean, you look at the, uh, the amount of effort that goes into modeling each and every little building here. The way that it's been done, that's a lot of effort. And the same gentleman that did all this work is the same gentleman that did Thessaloniki. So that just that gives you an idea right there of just uh, uh, the, the level of talent that we're looking at. Hopefully the quality of the stream, the stream is working well. Hopefully no one is uh, uh, having any buffering issues. So far everything seems pretty uh, pretty smooth on my end. I see the frames. My frames are set to unlimited, so mines are obviously going to jump around quite a bit. But uh, we're seeing as low as 30 and as high as 60 it looks like so far. So we've got runway or freeways and streets and you know I'm pretty sure I think the AES light traffic runs along all those sections. I guess at some point I'd have to turn on my uh, prepared ground traffic just to see if we cover those areas because I'm actually not really sure. And all these nice buildings here in the area. Very modern. This building up ahead actually reminds me of uh, the Beard Towers in uh, Las Vegas, these sort of like leaning towers here, somewhat similar. And then in the background we have Open LC. Another reason actually that uh, the reason why it took me a while is I had to make sure that I went and downloaded the updates for uh, Global Vector. There was actually two, the 1.5 and the 2.0, and I actually hadn't uh, downloaded and installed either, so I had to make sure that I took the time to do that. Uh, before the stream, and then once that was done, because obviously that takes a moment to download, uh, then I ran into problems with the uh, broadcasting software. So just getting a little bit closer to the ground here, taking a look at some of the autogen, some of the custom trees, and just getting an idea of the style of house. Very gable grooves, very fitting for the region. And frames in the 50s for so much autogen. In my uh, settings, if you go to the, um, the systems page, you can see that my autogen settings are actually set to fairly high. So to be getting these kind of frames with those settings is pretty good. I probably wouldn't try to jam a 777 or something in here at those particular settings. 
but nevertheless. I also, uh, in the uh, Fly Temple forum, under the uh, Copenhagen section, there is an option to download higher res textures. And those are the textures that I have installed here, by the way, just in case anyone wants to know um, about the high, the higher resolution textures, that's exactly what I'm using here. And um, as far as the control panel goes, in terms of features you can enable and disable, I have enabled every feature that is currently available for prepared. So the only features that were not enabled, obviously the ones that I can't use, which is the uh, the AES light. The, and if you don't have AES, more good news is uh, that you that there is an option to uh, have animated jet rooms. And that's something we can go on and test a little bit later on as well. So if you don't use AES, if you're not, you, the jet bridges are still animated. I believe via the control J option. I have to double check that. So if you use G -E, uh, G -E -X, G -E -G -S -X, which is what I use, uh, then you won't really, you shouldn't have any issue uh, having, having that work. We got some nice advertising in here. I don't know why, but I love ads. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm just crazy. So um, there's also options for in terms of the number of cars you can have in the parking lots. And uh, I went with the maximum uh, selection setting as well. So in just thinking back on Copenhagen, I remember the old Simlings version, and the Simlings version was actually um, as much, just about as much as Heathrow and Cloud9 Amsterdam. I think I was flying into Copenhagen um, equally as much, especially as it being, uh, I believe if I'm not mistaken, the busiest airport in, in the Nordic region um, with, I believe, Orlando coming in, coming in at a close second. Just uh, taking a quick look over at the comments, just making sure everything is running fine for you guys. I don't see any, uh, I think I see a couple of um, comments. Just want to make sure that everything is running okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Toby Tag is saying, snur turn to heading snurs what does that mean is that with my panning around uh so once again if you want my my uh, computer specifications if you look below the screen that you're watching now on this page and uh, if you just scroll downward um you'll see something that says system specs which should take you to the system specs page but if not you can go to airdailyx.net slash systems and that will show you my exact uh, uh specifications that i'm using mp 3 So just taking a look at the uh, air, the land side of the airport, we've got uh, car parks here with cars parked on the roofs. Got the Hilton Hotel, some nice glass area here for the catwalk between. Uh, I guess it's the terminal entrance. Someone was asking before if the terminal had internal modeling, and I did. I believe I said it did, and that is because it does, and that's actually what we're starting to take a look at now. Some very nice uh, representation on the glass here. And uh, as you can see, it's fully transparent. And not every part of the uh, airport is uh, fully transparent. There are some parts of the airport that is definitely uh, <clears throat> uses uh, sort of the standard texture bake on the windows. But in certain areas where glass really should be present is where glass was done. And if you look at this uh, connection area to Terminal 3, from I believe in the train station, right? Um, you can see here, this is an area that you definitely want to use actual glass. Nice transavia sign there. Was it transavia? So in this area, you know, you want to actually have glass and it looks so much better with glass as opposed to photo view. Got some nice uh, custom environmental uh, mapping there. Well, it looked like it was custom. Maybe it's nice. It might be the default. So just kind of taking a look on on the inside here. So there is some definite uh, internal modeling, which is very nice. Always love to see that. And in certain areas in the terminals, it's also done as well. 
which you can actually see right now. I'm really loving the quality of the glass, the way there's uh, some bloom effect there on the glass, some nice reflection. Very realistic. You can see inside, but then you can still see the reflection. So that kind of gives it a very realistic feel. Very nicely done here. The quality of the, of the textures are nothing short of what I would expect from Emilios in the, uh, the Fly Tampa team. Very well done. So for anyone who was asking about uh, in, uh, the, uh, uh, the interior modeling there, there you have it. Sorry if my brain is moving a little bit slow today. I've been up since uh, the second 1 a.m. because obviously the, the time has changed. You can actually see underneath the terminal quite a bit there too. There's some buses down there it looks like. I really love the quality of the glass and the reflection. And that is actually custom background reflections there. Look at that. You can see the terminal uh, that's behind me. There you go. Just kind of moving through here a little bit. Uh, there's our buses underneath. Very, very impressive internal model. And uh, just taking a look at the counter there, I'm not seeing anything different here than I saw approaching in over the city. So uh, the performance looks very good. And then, of course, you see in some areas, um, which is over to our right, you can see where uh, the uh, textured windows are in place. So where it's important is where you see it, and where it's not necessary is where you don't see it. So. I think, uh, I think the guys found a really good balance and trade-off in between what would be used as uh, uh, see-through and what would not be. And there's also an option uh, in terms of how much clutter you want on your ramps, how many ramp vehicles, so on and so forth. Once again, I just went for the maximum settings for everything. So quite naturally, on your system, you could probably get even better performance, I presume, uh, by selecting fewer ramp objects. And of course, not going with the highest definition vectors, which is what we're using here. Especially for the purposes of reviews and streams, I always try to set things up in the way that the developer intended it to be seen. Obviously, not everyone has the same computer specifications, so not everyone's going to see the same thing. But to be able to see it the way it's meant to be seen is something that's very important. Taking a look at, uh, it looks like we have some hangars and cargo. Well, that's interesting. The cargo area is uh, located in the same place with the hangars. So I say yes, cargo. You know, it's interesting. We haven't had SAS fly to Los Angeles in probably two decades. In fact, I think the last time SAS flew to LA, they were probably flying DC 10s uh, with the old uh, white and uh, sort of rainbow colors that was on it. I actually missed that over there. I think SAS might be due for a new livery right about now. It's been a while. So definitely uh, some photo reel texture application here on the uh, hangers and cargo section. Oh, what happened? Oh, bad eye point. work our way back over into the terminals. And much like Amsterdam, <laughs> uh, Copenhagen is very interesting when it comes to uh, the layout of the airfield. Runways are just running in every which direction. Speaking of Amsterdam, uh, the same team is uh, set up uh, for Amsterdam to be the next mega airport. But I doubt it's the next thing we'll see coming uh, from this team. And the reason why I say that is because while, once again, while Copenhagen was in development, uh, we saw at least, at least two to three airports coming from the team. 
These are static aircraft, by the way. These uh, Cessna. Is this the Sovereign, I believe? These are some very, very highly detailed static models. Actually, quite impressive, too. They look like uh, AI models. Nicely, uh, very nicely shaded and uh, textured, those two. So when it comes to AES, AES, we are getting it. Uh, but it's just, uh, it's again, it's just like any other standard project. It all boils down to a matter of when. As we all know, um, AMS, did I say AES? I meant AMS. Um, Amsterdam is not an easy airport to do. It is not an easy airport to do. I mean, you know, I, sometimes I wonder why after Cloud9 did it, and obviously the team that was Cloud9 is the same development team that is more or less FSDT. FSDT did go back and do LAX, which was an airport in huge demand. And, um, you know, one would think, why would they not go back and do Amsterdam again? Because Amsterdam is, I mean, if you, if you really think about it, what are the most popular airports here? You definitely have Zurich, which is done. You definitely have Heath Heathrow, which was done God knows how many times. Um, we need a new Shell du Gaulle. Uh, Frankfurt, Maine is coming. Twice. <laughs> um... Uh, what else? We're getting Rome next year, which is coming from uh, uh, Imagine Sim, and Imagine Sim has been doing an incredible job in terms of improving on the quality. I love that internal modeling and the different colors of the uh, the gate areas on the inside. It's very nice. If you're parking a plane here, you can see that looking inside is very nice. Well done. Uh, but uh, we finally have Copenhagen. Uh, but when it comes to Europe, I mean, you got to have Amsterdam. I mean, that's just, in my opinion, Amsterdam is a top three. It's, it's in, actually, it's in my personal top four. My personal top four is uh, Zurich, London, Paris, Amsterdam. Those are my top four uh, for Europe. So the fact that it's taken so long to finally get a proper Amsterdam has just been killing me. I mean, obviously... Uh, Dream Factory Studios did Amsterdam and there were some people who were pleased with it and there were some people who definitely weren't. I actually wasn't and as a result I wound up sticking with uh, my old Cloud9 version for years. Uh, the old Cloud9 version for me still seemed to be superior. So, uh, but uh, it's time for someone to, to, to really do a proper job with it. And taking a look at Copenhagen here, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that Amsterdam is going to be kick ass. Now many of you may or may not have known but um, for a while, uh, Flight Beam was talking about this uh, secret project, and the, the secret project that they had on their site and that we talked about for quite a while in Air Daily X was indeed Amsterdam. Um, unfortunately, I can't go into why that project was scrapped, but unfortunately, some things didn't quite work out according to plan, and so, um, unfortunately, uh, Flight Beam wanted to abandon the project. And uh, so, nevertheless, Emilios and friends decided um, Amsterdam would be the next project to take on. So we're going to turn them on here on this little gate. She can pull up there and take a look. And I think there's been a lot of confusion in terms of whether Amsterdam would be done under the FSDG name or under the, the Fly Tampa name. Um, as Renee pointed out to me in an email and, of course, here on the stream already, um, some concern in regards to um, Amsterdam no longer appearing on the... Uh, FSDG website, so uh, I don't really know. All I can say is that uh, I've been assured that Amsterdam is still in development, and uh, to me, that's that's what really matters. So nice in front of all of you. you can see some carpeting there, some departure screens, very nice. So again, taking a look at the quality of Copenhagen here so far, I am very, very, very happy that uh, Emilio is going to deliver. Now, will it be a 2015 release? I don't know. I don't know. We might have to wait till 2016 for that one. Don't quote me here. I'm just saying um, that it is a good question. Actually, taking a look here, is that a billboard or a television screen? I'm actually curious. I want to take a look. I think that's one of those screens that, that doubles as a billboard, isn't it? Just a very nice quality. Frames are still hanging out in the 40s and 50s here. Sorry, sometimes I, I move too fast and it'll cause the screen to pixelate. Sorry about that. Got video cameras hanging off the, uh, the alley tower. 
that's at least what we call these little mini control towers at LAX. We call them alley towers because for each alley that aircraft park in um, has its own control tower. And so each terminal um, has control over the alley, which is something that used to annoy me because at LAX, uh, I'm trying to remember, between the international terminal, I, it's not the case now because I think that that alley terminal has been closed at Terminal 4 at LAX because of the construction uh, with the, inter the new international terminal and all of the, uh, uh, the building a bridge and all that stuff. But anyway, whenever I had to fly out of the international terminal and... Uh, we, it, because that alley was controlled by American Airlines, American would always make sure all their planes got out first. And that used to annoy the crap out of me because you'd see all these American planes coming and going, and then we're still sitting at the gate. They used to piss me off. It's like, wow, they're making sure they take care of all their flights first. Take a look at these very high, uh, high quality jet bridges here. Very nice. You can see there that's the, uh, oh, what is that thing called? The, uh, Thing of a jiggy that blows the air into the APU. Why can't I think of what it's called right now? Blows the air through the cabin, rather not the APU. So here are some nice reflections. No internal modeling here. But some very nice reflections. Very nice. I love those jet bridges. I like how. Uh, the jet bridges are open and you can actually see down the jet bridges. There's a lot of developers that just have the doors closed and then you're met with like a closed jet bridge. And obviously in real life, when the jet bridge pulls up to the plane, those, those doors are already open. You can see people, they're waving, uh, so on and so forth. That's kind of how it should be. And uh, it looks to me like there was an airfield photographer seeing some detailed photo reel here. Of course, in these windows in particular, though, we don't have uh, the, uh, the reflections. This is all photoreal in that part of the terminal. Some shade in there. And some nice bands there with SAS. Looks like Volkswagen vehicles. And some more internal modeling. Let's take a look. And uh, actually, it's probably now a good time to take a quick second and take a look at any comments or questions before I go on too long of a tangent. What is this guy asking me to drive fast in the gate? I don't understand what he's asking. Oh, Rod says he hopes they model the coffee shops in Amsterdam. You're going to take me for that. And Renee says he's actually in touch with Emilio uh, as far as he covered here with Amsterdam. Hey, Renee, are you going to head down to the airport and help out with some uh, photography, please? Is that the plan? I think they're looking for some photographers in the area. And Adi's on board. Welcome, Adi. Adi says you can instantly see that this is an amazing piece of work by Clay. In Flight Tampa, oh, Adi says Flight Tampa and Flight Game are number one. They have the extra intricacies that others don't. <laughs> I'm not going to say I disagree. Nice internal modeling, some window shading here, and some uh, reflections there. It's very nice. Trying not to go too fast here because I know it can screw up the stream when I do. You can see there's some reflection on that glass there. Very good. Look at that. Nice reflections there. You can see all the seats on the inside. The blue carpet. That's one of the things I've been noticing so far between from terminal to terminal. There's different color carpet. And uh, he's actually taking the time to go down and uh, get the carpet properly worked out. So well done. 
very nice. And uh, I can only imagine what this place looks like when it's all decked out with AI traffic. Um, I plan to get my traffic situation worked out by the next uh, by the next stream. That that is my definite goal. In fact, I'll, I should be pretty busy today working out a few other things. My biggest concern, of course, is getting everything with Orbit's worked out. Um, as many of you may or may not know, I had a weird little virus on my computer. The virus wasn't. Um, I guess the reason how I realized there was a virus is that. Um, well, the first thing to go was Norton, because as we all know, Norton is just bullshit. Excuse my language, but um, I, I buy it because I feel like it's stupid to not have an antivirus program, and I haven't found anything better than that, I guess. Um, but uh, I, don't, I don't know that Norton actually works. All it seems to ever do effectively is to keep removing my trusted programs. For example, when it came to Fly Tampa here, um, it thought that the installer was a threat and then removed it and then I had to download it again because it couldn't restore it and blah 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 that's the only thing it ever seems to find whenever there's a legitimate threat it doesn't seem to recognize it so Norton was the first to go and um, when I realized I can't seem to get Norton working properly that's when I knew I had an issue um, but everything else seemed to be unaffected and I'm not even sure if it to be honest I'm not 100% sure it was a vi a percent sure it was a virus it just seemed like it was a virus to me because I kept reinstalling it and it kept wanting, not wanting to activate it. So um, I just assumed pretty much at that point it must be a virus. It kept refusing to connect and download updates. So, um, you know, after it takes me an hour and I can't figure it out, I just have to assume it's, it must be a virus. But um, I, don't, I don't know for sure if it was or not. But, you know, I, I'd rather just not even bother. You know, why take a chance? Let's just go ahead and, and restart the install. So. Uh, as a result, there's a lot of things that aren't installed, and so naturally for me, it's funny. When I went to go back in and start reinstalling things, the first things um, to get installed were uh, uh, Rec4 Texture Direct, and then uh, Orbix FTX Global Vector and OpenLC. <laughs> those were the first things to come on, like no airports, no aircraft, those were the first. And uh, but then I forgot. Oh crap! I've got to go back in and download the updates and, and then install those. So that takes time. Some nice architecture here in depth. Got some texture baking going on to accompany the uh, uh, the internal modeling here. So you've got sort of a sort of a balance between internal modeling and uh, baking on the uh, on the solid textures. Look at that. I love how the glass jet bridges and how everything comes on. You know, one thing that I hate about American airports is, for some reason, we seem to have a, a, a fear of glass jet bridges. I really don't understand what the hell that's all about. I don't get it. I don't know why we can't have the jet bridges. I mean, we just built that brand new $5 billion terminal or whatever the hell it cost. And, um, you know, the terminal was designed... Um, you know, for tall glass, let as much natural light in as possible without overheating the building and all that kind of crap. And so they go through the trouble of putting in all this glass, you know, to maximize the view. But then, when they then they then they just put the regular old ugly jet bridges back in there. And I think they recycled the same stupid jet bridges from the previous room. I don't know, but I just hate that. You know, the whole thought process was you want people to feel like they're in an open space, a wide open space, because they're getting ready to get on an airplane, they're going to be in an enclosed space. So you want people to feel, you know, comfortable and in a wide open space. And it's like, well, then why would you go through all the trouble spending all that money then jam them down a tight jet bridge uh, uh, with no glass, like you're in a prison? And obviously, if you're boarding a 747 or A380, and uh, the boarding staff doesn't have their act together, sometimes you wind up getting stuck in that damn jet bridge because, as we all know, you get these idiots who board the flight, and then they realize, oh, crap, my bag doesn't fit in the overhead. Well, let me just stand here for 10 minutes and try to jam that fucker in anyway. And uh, what is it? Oh. Oh, wow. Ooh. Uh, sorry. Uh, and then, you know, then they sit there and hold up everyone else while they're sitting there trying to jam this oversized piece into the overhead. And then everyone is backed up down the damn jet bridge waiting. 
And so that's one of the things I loved about Zurich, which was the first airport I ever went to that had uh, glass jet bridges, which is when that dock he opened up, um, gosh, when was that, 2002 or three? And uh, I thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing while I'm standing here. In fact, I was like, you know, slow down the boarding process. You know, I can see the plane, I can see everything going on outside. I thought that was incredible. And then I wondered, how come we don't do that here? I mean, if you want to want people to feel like they're in an open space, put them in a glass jet bridge. And then I saw there was some planes, well, then you have to cool it. Well, you have to cool it anyway. So what difference does it make? Tint the glass. You have to cool the terminal, you have to cool the jet bridge. It doesn't make a difference. And it makes the whole building look that better. But I guess glass jet bridges cost more. So again, if you're saying a, plane, a pane of glass costs more than you know an entire static, uh, jet bridge, and that's fine, screw it. But nevertheless, uh, the jet bridges here look very nice. I love the glass jet bridges, and it's one of the things that I always make a point to point out with uh, every airport scenery that I get a chance to visit. Really love that. Looks like we have the approach area here. And uh, I think, what should I do for, oh, lost control. I think what I'm going to try to do is, should I change, I'm trying to decide if I should change the, uh, the seasonal variation first or think of the night lighting first. I think I want to look at the night lighting first. Just taking a look at some of the logistics areas around the airport here. Everything was obviously included. Is that the old tower? So now that Copenhagen is back, it's like we're almost starting to close the gap when it comes to the Nordic areas. I've learned to say Nordic instead of Scandinavia. Um, some of you very, very wonderful Air Daily X readers uh, corrected me in terms of which countries are actually considered Scandinavian and which are not. I guess I very ignorantly assume that all the Nordic uh, countries are Scandinavian, which is not true, but all the Scandinavian uh, countries are Nordic. So, okay. <laughs> Got it. So, um, yeah, I think we're, we're pretty close. We have Helsinki by A flight. And by the way, I don't know what's going on with A flight. I, someone at one point told me that A flight does still exist. I'm losing control. A flight does still exist, and if they are working on something, but <clears throat> it's been years since an update from them, so I'm, I'm no longer inclined to believe that A flight is still around. They might be a one hit wonder. Sometimes that happens. You have one hit wonders. Hey, and A flight was like the flight beam of their time. A flight came around before Flight Beam did, and um, they were kind of the flight beam of their time in terms of the level of quality, which was awesome, freaking quality. So I certainly hope they still exist. But nevertheless, we have a tremendous freaking Helsinki. We've got an amazing Oslo. We've got Bergen. We've got, uh, oh crap, what do you, how do you pronounce it? Tromso? I know that's how you pronounce it. The O with the line going through it, I know it has a, a special way to be pronounced. But anyway, I'll just say Tromso. Um, Trondheim Barnes, which I know I'm also pronouncing wrong, but I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. A new one is coming of that. I mean, Joe Erland is working. I know that's not how you pronounce his name, but anyway, uh, Joe Erland, he's, uh, I know he's working on quite a few airports for Norway. Then, of course, we have FTX Norway in development, and then, of course, we have um, a project in development by Tor Stranden uh, that he's still working on. And Todd Tor, please, could you please get that out before the end of the year? Do you think we could do that, buddy? Before the end of the year, Tor? Do you, th you think we could do that, please? For me, a personal, personal favor. <laughs> um, but naturally, I guess he doesn't have to, to, to move on it any quicker than FTX Nor Norway does, so I guess that'd be my my next thing for Mr. Holger Salmon. Please, do you think we could get FTX Norway out before the end of the year? Could you do that for me? Just a favor, please. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, Norway is, I mean, at the pace that Norway is coming along, I mean, we're going to have almost every airport in Norway, at least every major airport in Norway, uh, before 2016. So Norway is pretty much a, a sealed deal. Uh, but besides Norway, um, again, there's the one in Finland, which of course is um, uh, the Helsinki, which is by Air A Flight, which is a tremendous product. And besides that, you know, Sweden is just dying on us here. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, again, there's the Arlanda by um, 
uh, what's what's the company now um, again? Um, flight Dream Flight Dream Flight Dream Flight Studios. Dream, no, not Dream Flight. Oh God, I don't want to get that confused. Dream Flight are the, are the cool guys uh, that just released uh, the French Airport that I uh, reviewed uh, a few weeks back. Um, anyway, uh, but anyway, yeah. There's the old. We'll just say Aerosoft. There's the old Aerosoft Norway. All right, just looking at the main tower here. Are you ready, Emil? Because I'm about to I'm, I'm about to be mean. I'm gonna be mean. I don't want to be mean. I said I was gonna be nice, but I'm gonna be mean because the main tower is so dark. I cannot see any detail. I mean, I guess is it this dark, this black in real life? But I feel like it's so dark that I can't really see the detail. It's just like. I'm a black and cold towel, man. You know, you know how it is. I'm just black. I'm just black and cold towel. Just standing over here. You know, can't see no detail. I'm black, so I can, I can make, I can make that joke. It's not racist, anyway. But uh, there's no detail here on the tower. What's going on? So I don't know. I, I guess I'd have to Google to see if it's really that dark in real life. But that, I guess that's just the only unfortunate thing. Um, if I were, for example, to make a comparison with, um, and here goes another airport I'm going to butcher here, but the Shemiratievo, Shemiratevo, Shem, Shemir, uh Moscow Airport. Um, I really like how they did the sort of internal modeling there. I mean, he really, uh, Stanislaw really went far with it, though. You could even see the computer screens, and even the computer screens had, like, environmental reflections on them. Obviously, that's all not necessary, although I really liked it. Um, but here, though, it's just I don't really see much detail in the tower. It just looks kind of washed out black. For many airports, a control tower is like the centerpiece of the airport. So, But other than the control tower, which I don't know, maybe some of you guys can probably correct me and tell me if it's really that dark in the line. I'm not really sure. So we've got some more logistics areas here, hangars, mares, which is uh, one of the most popular, I think, Nordic-based companies in the world. There's really nowhere you can go and not see that Maersk logo. They used to have their own airline, too, for a while, didn't they? I don't know if it still exists or not. I know they were flying, like, 767s or something for a while. I don't know if, I don't know if, that, still, if that still exists. So more, more hangers down here. we got Thomas Cook Airlines. Scandinavia. Isn't Thomas Cook kind of weird? There's a Thomas Cook Scandinavia, there's a Thomas Cook UK, um, and then Thomas Cook Germany, right? If I'm not mistaken, there's a lot of Thomas Cooks. And making our way over to the cargo area, I can tell you those DHLs out there are definitely static. And uh, let's see, Kappa saying, the tower is as hard, well the tower is hard, as you look at pictures, it's dark in some areas, you see reflection that make it darker. And uh, Andre says, Copenhagen, it, Kastrup, is Denmark's largest employer. You referring to the airport authority, or just all the, the companies that work there, out of curiosity? I didn't know that. What does that say? Oxford, Oxford, and it's a little So I'm assuming this is uh, Executive GA Angers. Looks like. Oh, and is that the Sky Chefs there? Oh, yeah, that's right. And there's the little catering trucks all the time. LSG, which I think used to stand for Lufthansa Service Ground or something like that. And then I think we've kind of sold this company about a decade ago. Lufthansa actually used to own a number of um, ground handling companies and then eventually just sold them all off. I know LSU was definitely one of them. So there is the Sky Chef. Uh, what do you want to call this place? The kitchen? where all your airline food comes from. I think the best 
I want to say, I think the best meal I've ever had on a plane was on an Emirates flight to Dubai, which was, I think, the best airline plate that I ever had. I was in business class. But um, besides that, the second best would be Max Jet. We used to serve lobster tail on that. Oh, that was great. These are A300s. These are static models as well. But then coming back from Dubai, the meal sucked. It was like the one thing I was looking forward to in an 18 hour, 17 hour flight. You know, there's very little to look forward to besides the food. Because that's what you're basically going to do the whole time. Wait, is that a 727? Let me turn around here. It looked like a 727. Nope. Why does a nose on that A310 look like a 727? Hand around a little bit quick. And some more of the logistics area that looks like. So all the buildings in the entire coverage area has been included. And give me a moment, I'm going to get to some of your comments, see if there's any questions before I uh, change these are part of those. Uh, before I change to the night lighting, which is, I think is what I'm going to first. Ah, it's been in my helicopter. Sorry about that. I don't want anyone to get uh, dizzy. Ooh, look at the trains. I'm a sucker for trains. Ah, too bad we don't have AES. We don't get any motion trains. But look at these trains. Ooh, these trains are nice. These are some good looking trains here. I love trains. Even in flight simulator, I freaking love trains. I tried to get into some train simulators um, in the past just because I really, really like trains. Um, I forgot, there was one train simulator, I, I downloaded a demo or something to see how much I liked it, and I don't know, I, I kind of got bored after a while, I don't know why, I mean, it's, I guess the train is not that much different than a plane where once you hit the cruise out, cruise speed, I mean, there's really nothing to do but just sit around and do nothing, and the train is like the same way, they put you on these long routes, and this particular route in the demo was like a really long route somewhere in the UK, and it's like, it takes like three hours to complete. And so it's like, once you hit that speed, um, there's really nothing to do but to continue, ugh, continue to look at the uh, the, the signals. Um, but, you know, the signals really were just like pretty much green all the way through. So I, you know, just kept on rolling all the way through. I guess that's the, uh, the airport power plant. And I like how... Uh, all the signage, the parking lot signage is set up here too. I mean, how about that for an eye to, keen eye to detail? Now I'm going to take a look and see if each sign says the same exact thing or if they say something. This says P17. And there's a uh, little LED uh, for number six. Let's take a look. Oh, this must be long term parking or something. And I'm going to get you to some comments here in just a moment. All right, so this is say so. Yep, yeah, E17. So all of them were done. <laughs> nice. I was going to say this would have been a good idea to just get lazy and say, ah, eh, no one's going to look. No one's going to look and see if I place the same sign everywhere. No one cares if it's 16 or 17. You guys are blowing over these signs in your NGX at a short final at 130 knots or whatever, 140 knots. No one's going to stop and look at the signs. I can get lazy. I don't think he did. Let's see, what does this one say? 15. <laughs> he must have known. You know what? That a-hole DeAndre is probably going to be the one guy who's going to go down there and look to see if the signs are the same. And if they're not, he's going to open his mouth and say something. So, <laughs> And here we have the tunnels for the trains. Oh, that's well done. Look at that. Very nice. What do we have here? Words that I can't pronounce. Lufthaven. Oh, I can pronounce that. What's this one say? Ah. Hobenhaven? Hobenhaven? And it looks like we're coming back up from the airport entrance now. I don't know why I always used to think Copenhagen was bigger than it is. It always seemed so much bigger in my mind, I guess. 
I mean, when you compare it to Amsterdam, it's obviously smaller, but um, gosh, well done. Very well done here. I guess it's time to take a look at some night lighting. So while I get ready to set up for that, we'll take a look at any comments you guys might have. And there's our helicopter that's been giving us a tour around. It has been rather patient with my horrible flying. Oh, there was supposed to be, I think I was supposed to give uh, a disclaimer here. I believe Emilio, I don't think the official prepared V2 version has been released yet. So I think there was something that they're still working on with the night lighting, if I'm not mistaken. Look at the way, look at just the lighting in prepared. Doesn't the lighting look awesome? The way the shadows. I always think that is looks He said there was something where the lights don't fully. Oh, I see what you. Uh, okay, I see what he means. Yeah. So in the case with some of the lights, they're still they're still refining that for prepared V2. If you're using FSX VX10 and all that, you shouldn't have any issues. Obviously, it doesn't look bad, but nevertheless, I think that was something that they're still working on with the lighting for prepared V2. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna take a quick look at some of the comments here. going to take a look at some comments. Sorry, it's taking me a while to get around to them. And of course, if there's, for those of you who know this airport very well, uh, or live in the area, or, or fly in and out of here, if there's something that I missed, or you want to see more up close, uh, definitely let me know so I can make sure I can go with that. Renee, I want you to get your butt out to the airport with your camera. If you don't have one, get one. Um, I can recommend some good cameras for you. You can get a nice Nikon for around probably $1,500 or some good reason. So uh, I want you out there at the airport helping out. <laughs> Let's see. And Sid, was that question for me? Um, does it feel like Denmark? It certainly looks like Denmark. I guess it's good. Um, Renee says, I'm curious about the Osaka RJVD project to finish on the ABX scoreboard. You know what, Renee? I started to, 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 to get that done, and then I didn't finish. So I'm still working on that. But the Osaka is going to be by night. So if you look at... Um, uh, with the, the Shanghai that Madison made. It's, the Shanghai is very good. 
and uh, he's continuously uh, improving on his skills. So by the time he gets around to Osaka, Osaka's going to be great. And he's going to make it with the full internal modeling and everything. He's also working on uh, Rome. I think we agreed that Rome is just not, it just hasn't been given the, the respect that it needs. And so he's going to really put some serious time and effort into Rome. And that'll be his next project. And um, what was the other one? Uh, what was the other one? What was the other one? Oh, Sacramento. In fact, a number of people mentioned that they wanted a good quality Sacramento. And uh, I believe it's Sacramento. Um, and so Sacramento is also on that list as well. So that, that's the 2015-2016 20, roadmap for Magnuson. I think he's going to knock out a couple of those in 2015 with the last one in 2016. I think the 2016 is coming up real side. A uh, who on that PMDG or is that the failing? Uh, yeah, I wonder if I should head out to the desert and watch it fly over. I think it's sad. They just need to tear apart like that. They really should have left that plane somewhere in the middle of the airfield. I mean, God knows that thing is not there for a Don Wolf Board says, just bought it. I personally think it's one of the most beautiful add-on airports I've ever seen for us. It's Wonderful. said it agrees with me, those trains are really nicely modeled. Unfortunately, they're just that. But again, if you're using FSX, then that means you have uh, the option to install the US It's just going to buy it in the morning. Wait for those servers to cool down a little bit, eh, hey, uh, sir? <laughs> Andre says he thinks he's gonna buy it. He thinks! And, uh, good point. He says a perfect place to fly the Cool Sky DC9 and SAS. -er. I'd go with the old SAS. Throw down the 70 Oh, they said they have a DSLR, but don't have their side access to it. Ah, just get the land side access. It's all good. Do what you can. I hear the wife up there laughing. I don't know what she's laughing at. I don't know if she's watching the show before. Okay. Sorry, Rodeo says he can't hear me. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, so Osaka and Rome is going to get some quality love. And it says, we're going to make my day with Taipei and Emilio Sopea. 2015 is going to be awesome. I just got to finish the doggone billboard. There's still a lot of work to do on that billboard. And uh, I'm hoping to try to get that done. Um, I'm actually going to plan for it tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it today. But that one, the billboard is definitely my immediate plan to work out by tomorrow. And uh, Sid says Canada needs more love. I actually tried to talk him in. Whenever a developer comes to me and says, hey, uh, what do you recommend? Because you believe it or not, a, a, a number of developers uh, do come and ask me, you know, what, what I recommend. And I always try to stick Canada in there. I always try to stick Canada in there. But um, I don't know. I think developers are reluctant to do Canada. I guess there's just a thought that there aren't enough people in Canada. But I have to be honest, there's enough. I think there's, there's quite a bit enough. And I think um, by Tampa... And FSDT already proved that with both Montreal and, uh, uh, what's that, uh, Vancouver. So I believe it's already been proven that, there, that, the, that the demand is there, but I just think there are some developers that feel that, you know, if, if you can still pick an airport in the U.S. that might be better, then probably better to still do that. So Emilio was saying that there is some issues with the night lighting if prepared. I'm not seeing what those issues are. I did see that there is some kind of funky glare. Um, but I don't see any problem overall with the night lighting. It looks pretty damn good. The, the way the light is splashing on the, uh, the ramp areas looks very realistic. I can't say that I see the issue. It's pretty darn good to me. 
only issue I do see is with my stupid clouds. With the latest prepared update, I don't know why, I don't know why it's going to hold. Let's not even worry about that. Let's do that. With the latest prepared update, um, it, it, it addressed some known issues with clouds, and then in the interim, they then created another issue with the clouds. So uh, there's still something of an issue with clouds um, that, that, that still needs to be worked out. It's not a performance issue anymore, but it's still definitely an issue uh, in terms of the, 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 the display of them. Something just doesn't look quite right. Ooh, and you can even see on those wind farms out on the ocean there, they have, uh, there are, they're lit with the red lights on top in the background. Make sure no planes or helicopters run into them. And birds for that matter, I guess. So we're taking a look at that night lighting on the internal modeling there. It looks very, very nice. Love those glass jet bridges. Quite, quite a spacious terminal area too. Very nicely done. So yeah, I always try to make it a point to recommend Canada and I always make it a point to recommend Japan because uh, I, I am very, very confident that there is quite a bit of demand for Japanese airports. I mean, if you look at Wing Creation, and their stuff is expensive, man. I'm sorry, but I, I know that they price it for the Japanese market. But, you know, I don't know how popular the market is in Japan. I know that there are a lot of people uh, that just, you know, they love Japan airports. They visit Japan a lot or whatever the case is. And there's just a huge demand for them. And... Um, Nevertheless, though, you know, they're, they're priced for J Japanese customers in Japan. And, uh, but despite the fact that they're expensive, it, 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 it proves even more so that there's a demand for those airports because as, as expensive as they are, people are buying them. Every time Wing Creation releases it at the Japanese airport, it rockets straight to number one on the list. So it's like, you know, people are complaining that they're expensive, but they're obviously spending the money. So I always try to recommend to developers, I mean, if people are willing to pay, you know, 40 bucks, which is more than a Fly Tampa, a typical Fly Tampa airport, you know, for a Japanese airport that, you know, was not of equal quality, then, you know, imagine if the quality developers decide to get in there and, you know, do some damage. You know, I think there's a lot of money to be made in Japan. But uh, nevertheless, um, just like Canada, there's always some skepticism, but uh, imagine Sim is, go is going for it. So. And um, I think Osaka is really the next big one to be on, on the list because obviously Narita was done by recreation. Haneda probably is the one that the only other one that's probably um, in super demand would be Haneda. But since Tokyo is already done with Narita and recreation, it seems like Osaka would be the next big jump. And really, when you think about it, um, obviously Osaka is an easy airport to build on a developer standpoint because. It's just one air, one terminal, one really long freaking terminal. So there are some things you can get away with, um, you know, in terms of the fact that it's just one piece of architecture plus the surrounding buildings. But um, once you get into something like Narita, you know, or something like Copenhagen here, each terminal has its own architecture. So then you have to kind of deal with the issue of, you know, creating a whole different airport <laughs> within an airport sort of thing. But when all the, the, the terminal architecture is the same, then you can get things done almost in half the time. So that's a good thing about Osaka. So obviously for those of you who are into Japanese airports and expect more from them, this is your opportunity because Imagine Sim is, is, uh, is going for it. So it's going to be your opportunity to show that, hey, the demand is there. You definitely want Japanese airports. airport sign. I think I'm definitely going to look forward to writing up this review. And let's come back and take a look at that lovely glass. I love the buses sticking out underneath the building there. That's a nice touch. Very well done. And in fact, let's take a look at uh, the other part over in the walkway there. There we 
There's our Hilton with uh, the blinking light on top. It's Terminal 3. Loving all that glass. It's very nice. Look at our Hilton Hotel here. Here's P7. Ah, I went through the building. I didn't want to do that, but obviously I'm flying a helicopter backwards, so I have no idea which direction I'm going in. You can see the roadway there has uh, custom lighting on it. some runway lighting which we'll get to and obviously I don't think anyone approaches this runway right Air airplanes don't fly right over the airport do they can someone confirm that for me with this runway heading that we're looking at now um, are there actual airplanes that that approach in this direction and fly like right over the uh, the airport here that's got to be interesting you're boarding a CRJ and then suddenly a 747 flies over. <laughs> Can anyone confirm that? Do, do they actually approach from this direction? That's got to be interesting to see. I always found that to be interesting, you know, airplanes approaching and over airplanes like that. I know Shell Du Gaul is sort of set up that way too. It just never seemed right to me. And what if something goes wrong last minute and you, you're approaching over other airplanes? I don't know. I love the custom light lighting, especially in the city areas there too. It's very nice. Uh, one developer of Worthy Note, look at that carpet. <laughs> wow, just look at that carpet. I'm just like, I know that's very stupid of me to care, but that carpet just looks nice, doesn't it? Uh, one developer of very noteworthy mentioned uh, that I should have mentioned is LH Simulations and their Budapest project. Sometimes I forget to mention them only because, um, you know, they developed the one mega airport and um, the air airport previous are very small regional airports. And of course, after Budapest, they've continued along the trend of just developing small regional airports. So I don't know if we're going to see another mega airport come out of LA simulations anytime in the near future. But you look at that, um, that Budapest, and I mean, it's instant fly Tampa, instant uh, um, flight being quality right out the door. For first time as a uh, as a mega airport, I mean, it's just instantly they hit the nail on the head right quick. Oh, I spun my helicopter again. It doesn't like me trying to pull back. Like that. Um, so naturally, ideally, I think we'd all like to see more coming from LA simulations, but I just don't think um, I just don't think that's going to happen. Let me see. Jet FA is here. Welcome aboard. Um, oh, Cap says he only used 22 right if the firefighters have to cross 22 left. That's a good question. And as it says, hopes uh, LA simulations make more sceneries. They, they, they will. In fact, they are. Um, in fact, uh, I'll say this. That right now, they're working on an airport in Croatia. Um, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but I know I've been covering it, and um, you can always check out their Facebook page, because I can't think of it. Oh, God, I love that night lighting. Um, but uh, that's what they're currently working on. Then, of course, we have Aer Aerosoft, um, I think, doing Split. Is it Split? I think they're doing Split, and they're doing... Um, there's another one that I can't think of the name of it. Um, they're working on And then there's another developer that's... Uh, going to be uh, developing, uh, I'm not going to say which airports, but um, there's another developer that's uh, on, on uh, his way into Croatia as well. So we're getting ready to start to see Croatia come alive, which is very nice. So Croatia is definitely coming to life. So I would say 2016 is going to be a good year for Croatia. But uh, I can't really say say anything at this point other than to say that look forward to some news coming out of Croatia uh, for 20, 2015. Look at that lighting on the roads. Looks very nice. Just taking a little bit um, to fly over uh, the, the city and look at some of the night lighting before we switch back to daytime and 
start to take a look at some of those uh, winter textures. But the night lighting is very nice over the city. It's good. All this custom night lighting. Very realistic. Yeah, Sydney, uh, Sid, you just hit the nail on the head. And uh, the great thing about Dubrovnik is um, I love the approach. It's got a very exciting approach. And what was that company that did Dubrovnik back in FS9? Actually, a couple of different developers did that. They, they did uh, Croatia. And um, I really love Dubrovnik was always my favorite because it's got that exciting approach. And then it's just so scenic. You have the ocean on one side. And then on the other side, you have... Um, What's that called? Um, you have sort of like these mountains, a nice fjord. So, I mean, it's very, 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 very pretty. Look at that. Look at that road right here. That looks very good. So, it's a personal favorite of mine. So, definitely expect news coming out of that region of Europe. And um, Latin VFR also is making their approach into Europe as well now. So in their, on their road map, you can see that they're doing Southwest Florida. In fact, they're doing, they've got a couple of more Floridian airports on their, on their map. And uh, after that, they'll be, uh, they'll be doing some airports in Europe, too. So for those looking for more European airports, you're going to have another developer coming to town. Interesting circular building here. So right now we're just taking a look at the bigger picture at higher elevation. In fact, um, let's go ahead and change. I'm off uh, just so that we can see how these buildings look like in daytime, the surrounding areas. I mean, that looks awfully realistic when you look at it from high elevation here. That's very realistic. I mean, all those buildings had to be made to match the, the correct and proper positions on the uh, on the map. Oh, that just looks very that looks very very well done. Very realistic, and you can see where it starts to hit um, open LC, and um, you can see there. I mean, it's really. You can see where the where the uh, the the, uh, the scenery area uh, kind of comes in contact with Open LC, which is only on that side. But um, it's it's not one of those things where it's like, oh my God, there's a clash of textures. No, it's not really bad at all. And a very high quality resolution um, photo image. All right, I'm going to take a look, see if there's any other questions for me, and then uh, we're going to take a look at some winter textures now. So if I did this right with the control panel, uh, we shouldn't have any issues. We should be able to go straight to winter textures, and that's what we're going to take a look at. Now, uh, let's see, time and season. Oh, you know what, let me close this window first. All right, so if I did everything correct, we should be able to see winter textures. Uh, let's see, 12, let's go to January 1st, 2015. So like I said, in that uh, control panel, uh, if you elect to go with the autogen trees, then you should not have to go back in. That's if I'm understanding it correctly, then you should not have to go back in and reselect each seasonal variation, as if I read it correctly. And it looks like I did. Okay. Yeah, no, LA Simulations is not doing Dubrovnik. That's another developer. 
Uh, let's see, Ross saying, I know one thing, I'm juggling three different flight simulators on my machine and it's getting to be too much work. Uh, Ross, it sounds like to me you got to dump FSX, dump whatever else you're using, and go with prepared. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, Cap says, um, might sound a bit misunderstanding the last statement by the fire trucks, but as you say, landing 22 right, the traffic flow was normal, 22 right departure, 22 left arrival, or 04 left for landing, 04 right for departure. And uh, one drive, is it drive? Deprive, welcome aboard. Uh, Pratt says, do we know when they have open land class in North America? I believe that's going to be 2015. I believe. I think. So that's just a thought. All right, let's take a look at these winter textures. Oops, let's just get rid of that. Wow, that's actually some nice looking winter texture going on there. Here's our bridge. There it is. Try to descend here and take a look at these textures at lower altitude here. What's so funny? So many what? Of what? Oh, you guys watching me? Oh. I'm looking for any guys in a bit. I'm almost there. All right. Very lovely looking seasonal variations here. And actually, it's not just winter. I think they've gotten all the different seasons in here, too. So I should probably... I don't think I'm going to run out of memory. I think my memory is actually going pretty good right now. I'm just looking at my LCD counter. I think we can try to take a look at maybe fall or autumn and see what that looks like. But uh, as far as Copenhagen goes, the last time I've been here in the simulator, again, was Sim Wings. So if you remember how long ago that was, we're talking maybe five or six years ago. That's the last time I've been here in the flight simulator. Very, very long time ago. So naturally, when it comes to prepared, I, this is my first time coming back here. So naturally, to see the difference in terms of the quality of products we got back then and what we're getting today, it's, it's quite impressive. Back then, I mean, I don't even think it was fathomable, fathomable um, to build something on this, on this scale. certainly wasn't happening back then. A little snow there brushed on the runway. And it actually does have the volumetric grass too, but I think my grass is still green, isn't it? That's supposed to be white or non-existent. So maybe I didn't do something right in that area. I can see the grass is still there. Hmm. I wonder why that is. And Renee's asking, are there any snow buildups like Helsinki? Not that I can see so far. Uh, just taking a look. No, not that I can see so far. No, I don't see any. Nope, I'm going to go on a limb and say probably not.
So as far as the quality, I think it, uh, it definitely says Fly Tampa. Uh, it definitely says Emilios. And the, and the thing about Emilios, again, this is his largest project I think he's ever done. So um, obviously you can see the discipline and uh, the amount of effort, attention to detail, and time that went into this product. And uh, I have to say I'm very proud of our, of our Emilios. He's certainly come a very long way. And actually, should I even say he's come a long way? I mean, even his first product was still kick-ass. So <laughs> it's not like he started off bad and then really had to work his way up to good. I mean, he just started off good. I think the only difference here is, is that he just took his good and put it on a larger scale. But nevertheless, he's still come a long way. And um, I don't think I've ever heard one single solitary complaint about any product he's ever done. And I have them all, and I'm very pleased and impressed with all of them. So, um, Copenhagen here is absolutely no exception. It, he, he's really lived up to his name, and I think he's, he's made us all quite proud. There's the trees with uh, the, uh, the winter texturing on it. So, I just wonder why the grass didn't turn over. The trees did, not the grass. So, I have to go in on the And I guess why not? Let's take a look. Let's change the season one more time. Let's take a look at October. November, let's say November. Let's take a look. Actually, all I need to do is just reset to the default time anyway. So give me one second. The screen might go blank for a minute here. Let's change to uh, reset the system time. That's good enough. Let's see what that looks like. So give it a minute. Oh, that's right. Thank you for reminding me about the jetways. I'll have to switch over to an aircraft and um, take a look at the jetway animation as well. Again, this is prepared V2. So AES does not work with this, but there is an option in the control panel to have either some jetways animated or all of them. I went on ahead and selected all of them. So um, we're going to go ahead and play with those jet bridges in just a minute. I got to switch aircraft here. We don't need a jet bridge going to our helicopter. Look at those textures, huh? Very nice. Very good looking seasonal variations. And from what I understood doing a stream with Misha over Lake Tahoe, I always used to think that if you bought winter textures, um, that you also had to buy, um, or if you bought summer textures, you'd have to buy spring textures, you'd have to buy fall textures, all that, and I guess that's not the case. You just buy the one variation and then you go in and you edit them as necessary to have the different variations. So I guess that's kind of how it works. All right, so I just got a correction. Um, so Emilios is watching. <laughs> Obviously, he's watching me like a hawk. Um, but, um, okay, so here's the deal. Um, if I want the autogen trees with, with, that comes with the automatic season switch, which is definitely what I have activated, um, then the 3D grass option should be off. It's the only non-compatible item with autogen trees. So um, that's something to keep in mind in that control panel. If you are going to allow um, for the autogen trees, then you have to turn off the grass. So that's the trade-off. So again, they're still working on this new um, control panel, which if I understand will be uh, across all flight tamper products, past and present. And it's still something they're working with, but for the time being, <clears throat> for the time being it looks like the grass, the airfield grass is not, is the only thing that's not compatible. So honestly, I found that the grass didn't really bother me that much, to be honest. So I probably just leave it in there anyway, so I don't have to bother with it anymore. I found it didn't bother me too much. But if it does bother you, then you have to deselect that part. So there you go. And if I had read the manual, which I obviously did not, uh, <laughs> then that part would have been explained. <laughs> so thank you very much, Emil, for that. Also, Emilio, since you're listening, um, I know you mentioned something about the lighting, uh, but I actually found the lighting looked pretty damn good 
I don't have any complaints about the night lighting with um, prepared V2, which is what we're using. In fact, that's some of the better night lighting I think I've seen with the exception of like, you know, comparing to like Flight Beam and stuff who's really good at night lighting. I thought the night lighting was awesome. And I actually like, even, even if in real life lighting is not that bright, I actually like lighting to be a little bit brighter in the simulator. Because I find that just, you know, around 12 a.m., like super, super dark with prepared because of the way the lighting works, it just gets too dark at night. So I actually like it when um, a little bit of extra lighting is added. And in this case, um, the night lighting was actually quite stellar. All right, so we're going to switch into an airplane now. At least that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, actually, I kind of cheated and just tried to drag all my uh, backup files from uh, my other installation and just drag them in into this one. So hopefully I can at least get an airplane installed enough that we can try to get that jet bridge working. I haven't taken the time to go through and install everything just yet. That's going to take a long time, so I tried to cheat. But uh, if I didn't copy over all the files, and I know I'm probably going to get a CTD, but I'm going to risk it and try to see if I can. Oh, the light beams. That's correct. And we actually did see those light beams. There we go. Yeah, they don't show, they do show up, the light beams, as we all saw, but they don't, I guess they don't show up pretty much in the same way. But the light beams definitely show up. And in fact, we'll switch back to that one more time. So I guess the, the deal here is that they don't show up as they should in FSX, but they definitely show up and they actually look quite nice. But um, nevertheless, I guess that was the only thing. You can see the way those light beams are there. But again, I find that it doesn't really bother me. So let's go ahead and put this thing down. We'll switch aircraft and uh, we'll try to take any final questions for the scenery. And I don't think anyone's gonna disagree. I think this is the Copenhagen we've all been waiting for. I dare somebody to disagree with me on that. This thing down. Come on. Well, look at those. How the look at that like kind of sparkle. I'm kind of glad I did that. Look at that sort of like sparkle texture on the ground there. Look at that. Look at that. I actually just noticed that. That's actually pretty neat. I guess, it, does that like represent sort of the, um, I mean, I'm using the high-end textures here, but it's a, that's actually pretty nice. It's like ground debris there. Very nice. Uh, your screen might go dark for just a moment while I try to select a vehicle as prepared likes to call it. I've never liked calling them vehicles. All right. Oh, Yun's here. Yun, you're a little bit late to the party, man. Yun tuning in as always from Switzerland. Okay, let's try to find an Airbus or something of some sort. Let's see here. I feel like the second I select something, it's going to crash. Oh, please don't crash. I know I cheated, but... Most of my aircraft usually work. It's only the more complex ones that don't like what I'm trying to do now. All right, we're going to try the Aerosoft Airbus and see if it will work. Please work. Please work just for me. The navigation database issue doesn't work, but at least the airplane, if the airplane could please work, that would be great. I'm not going to fly. Oh, does my mouth sound, my mic sounds broken? Hmm. I actually have my mic plugged into a port that I don't normally use. That could be why. I might have to change that. 
Okay, we got a little Luffy Airbus here. And uh, the goal for this is just to try to get her onto a gate. And so we can play around with those lovely um, jet bridges here. So let's see how this goes. We're going to do some slewing. So unfortunately, we don't have AES, but um, uh, we do have jet bridges. So let's see what happens. Oh, I need to I think I have to have the parking brake set right. Let's see here. You must be in an airport parking space to request jet bridge. Okay. Well, I guess I'm not parked properly. Let's try to move up a little bit. Let's try there. Let's see what happens. Oh, come on. Really? That's not it either? Let's move up again. That's too far. I keep saying I must be in an airport parking space. Right, let's back that thing up. Let's try right there. Nope, it doesn't want to go that one. Okay, let's try another gate. I keep saying I must be in an airport sp uh, parking space to attach a jetway. I thought I was. Maybe that's not an appropriate spot. Let's move over. Meow. All right, let's try this. Come on, play nice. Oh, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Got another email from my buddy. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, if you just fell on static because of technical reasons, move to A14. It will sure work. Okay, so if this doesn't work, we'll go to Alpha 14. Let's take a look. Control J. Oh, there we go. All right. This one works. This is Alpha 9. So there's definitely an option in the uh, control panel for certain gates or all gates. And I know I selected all gates, but I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I screwed up somewhere. But no, this one definitely works. And it attaches perfectly, too. Look at that. All right. Let's call up our G. Oh, wait. Did I even install it? I didn't. Oh, God, I was going to call up GSX, but I haven't reinstalled it yet. No, I thought it was going to be great, too. We could just start that up, but I did. Let's take a look at what everything looks at at ground level. When you're in a helicopter, everything looks one way, but once you're on ground level, everything looks a little bit differently, especially when you throw an aircraft into the mix. There we go. So we've got our lovely jet bridge there. Looking very nice. This is a very scenic picture at airport. It's very nice. So again, because um, of a current limitation, you can see there, uh, you can sort of see these static flares coming from the lights. Um, that's pretty much the only limitation so far with Prepare P2 that's not fully compatible yet. Uh, so obviously if you're running FSX and DX10 you'll be fine with Prepared. It's one of those things where you can either buy it and install it now or wait for an update or the official triple installer. I just say go for it, buy it now. I mean, that, that's the one thing you got to worry about. Who cares? You're not, are you really going to see that from your jet bridge or from your, uh, from your virtual cockpit anyway? Which I don't think is a big deal. And this is what everything looks like from your virtual cockpit too. <clears throat> And also, Emilios is saying the buggy reaction and wheel sinking um, is a is a P3D general native bug. Only FP, uh, da -da -da, AES can solve that. Is it part of the wheel sinking? Mm. Doesn't look like a big deal. No, it doesn't look like a big concern here. 
I love this like effect on the ground though. That looks really nice. It's like sort of concrete particles. Alright, control J again. Let's see if we can make it move back. So I guess just a general note to all developers, I think a lot of people are, especially those who are using, um, who are using prepared, obviously we're not using AES anymore. So, you know, to have custom JetBridge animation, I think nowadays it's just a must. It really is just a must. Um, uh, because obviously AES is not compatible and the only thing that GEX or GSX doesn't uh, offer is JetBridge animation. That's pretty much it. So as long as we still have that option, I think I think a lot of us are going to be happy campers. So all right, I'm going to take a look now, see if there's any other comments, anything that I might have missed, anything that if, you, if anyone came late and they'd like to see it now, now would be, a, be the good time to ask so I can go ahead and preview that for you. Just uh, sitting here at the aircraft, um, just looking at this eye point and looking at all of these uh, buildings in the background that are lit, look very, very beautiful. So to the developer responsible for that, if you were watching, you did an amazing job. I am extremely impressed. Just like with Thessaloniki, um, you definitely outdone yourself once again, because obviously, um, you know, there are a lot of developers that would leave this stuff out, and I see complaints of people saying, oh, it's too big a file, oh, it's gonna give me out of memory errors, blah, blah, blah. I mean, no, it's not, and no, it's not. And, um, you know, what it does add is the absolute realistic immersion of everything that surrounds the airport. There's even an animated wind farm there. I mean, this is how it looks in real life. And why not have it look this way in the scenery as well? With all the trees and the autogen buildings and stuff. I mean, obviously, if it's too much of a lag on your system, then you can elect to turn these things off. But um, to be quite honest, I would rather dumb down the textures and still have those, um, you know, those objects in the background because you're going to get the full experience approaching the airport at night or during the day for that matter uh, you get the full experience as you should you get to see from the flight deck what pilots in the life can see and that's what makes it so much worth it so well done uh, let's see so sky fly Xander, welcome aboard is asking can i check and see if the jetway works before i close down well that's what i just did but i'll reattach it for you uh, there it goes. It's moving into position for you now. See any other questions? Sid says, totally agree. This is definitely how we should look. Uh, let's see. Captain Gombo, you're late too. Why, why are all my usual people so late for the party today? Um, <clears throat> and uh, he said he definitely has to buy it. Looks like a radio airport. I definitely agree. It's, it's a tremendous airport. Um, it's like we're starting to get close to the end of 2015 and so it's like there's still so much 2015 or 2014 rather still has so much to uh, to give us before the end of the year and Sid says that ground sparkle effect is awesome I know I like that ground sparkle Rondon welcome aboard says I wasted my AES credits don't feel bad Rondon I think I spent Oh God, I don't know. Only the Aerosoft people who have access to my account can tell me exactly how much I spent on AES credit. But I think I have like 25 credits. So you met you 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 factor in. I live in the U.S., so that's 20 bucks per credit pack, and I have 20 credit packs, right? So how much did I spend? <laughs> so all I can say is don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. I think I have 25 credit packs at 20 bucks a pop. I think they're about 20 bucks a pop, right? I mean, I haven't purchased a credit pack in a long time, so. But um, that's money that's all gone. None of that stuff will serve me anymore unless uh, AES makes its way into P3D. So, I mean, it's like it's sad, but I guess that, that's why. Um, Ron Dunn says, I tried Control Juliet in with mine and it didn't work. Well, Ron Dunn, you have to make sure um, a couple of things. I tried a couple of gates here and it didn't work. Um, so make sure that in the control panel you select all gates because you obviously need to get every gate for uh, me to have that selection. But so far with this particular aircraft, some gates didn't work. I'm going to move the uh, aircraft position one more time to another gate and we'll just see if it works or not here. We'll just go straight over here. I like these glass jet bridges. And we'll just try one more. Oh, that smells good. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's back that thing up again, and let's see if we can get this one to roll with us. Control 
J. I think that's too far, huh? Actually, I might even get near a message on this one. Let's move up a little bit closer. Oh, I might even get the error message on that one. So I, I'm pretty sure I did select for all jet bridges, but I guess I didn't. So um, in your case, make sure you pull up that control panel. Once again, the scenery does come with a control panel. So you want to go ahead and make sure because if you don't have all jet bridges selected in that control panel, they're all not going to work. Only certain ones will. And you'll have to, I guess, check the manual for that one. I think this one's going to work. Yeah, this guy, he's coming all the way out. So obviously I thought I selected it, but I guess I didn't. So um, that's something you want to you want to definitely take a look at. So for those of you who are not fans of the internal modeling, gosh, how do you how would you not love that? Look at the way that looks. Oh, what happened? Was it my eye point that got in the way? I just think that looks great. I love that internal modeling. Can I see my airplane on the other side? Oh, I can. Nice. I can't see my airplane there. Look at that. There it is. Cool. Very nice. All right, let me take a look at some more uh, any other questions here. So definitely make sure you check your control panel, folks. And, um, yeah. <laughs> One on says, yeah, I feel better now. I'm glad I can make you feel better. <laughs> I spent a lot on those. All right, Sid's taking off. Thank you, Sid. Always great to have you aboard. And um, let's see. Well, they all should work. In fact, let me um, just take a minute. We're going to switch over to my desktop here, if it works. Oh, let's get rid of that. Um, is that still there? Okay. And let's see. Oh, yeah, I just reinstalled my window, so, yeah. Okay, let's take a look and see. Here's the configurator here. Oh, I got to stop the simulator first? Darn. I was going to show you guys the configuration tool, but, um, shoot, I have to kill the simulator first. Um, do I want to kill the simulator? Yeah, let me kill it. Where'd it go? Uh, let's see here. Fly Tampa. Where'd you go? Fly Tampa. Fly Tampa uh, configurator. Here we go. This is your configurator here. Just because I keep talking about it, but I guess you guys kind of need to see it to kind of know what I'm talking about here. I uh, just want to make sure that that's actually showing up the way it should be. Okay, good. Um, so again, these are the, this is the season switcher here, and you have January through December. But if you can't be bothered with that, then what you do is, and right now there's only one tab for Copenhagen. Eventually, I think they'll have tabs for all the other airports um, that is offered from Flight Tampa. But for now, there's just Copenhagen, and these are the particular options you have. So you have apron light effects, which I turned on. In fact, oops. In fact, I probably should have, oh, what did I do? What did I do? Ah, oh, shoot. Let's do that again. Um, I didn't mean to click that. Um, so with the apron light effects, I actually probably should have deselected that. Why am I getting this problem? All the time? Oh, you know why? Hang on. Maybe I should have run as administrator. Right, let's do that one more time. Flight Temple, where are you? All right. Hopefully it's not going to do that again. There we go. Um, so we want to, I guess we want to turn off that, that light splash since we're using it prepared because that, since that seems to be an issue. Static aircraft I had on, 3D city lights are on, which look very nice. Animated wind socks. Oh, I didn't actually see that. I have to go back and look at those animated wind socks. Animated objects such as flags. I got to go back and look at that. 3D grass, which we had. I'm actually going to keep the 3D grass, um, even though if you're using um, autogen trees, so the autogen trees here, and you can see here it says if you activate custom, uh, if you activate autogen trees, seasonal textures will be switched automatically. No season switch is required. 
Note that the final look of autogen trees may vary depending on the type of third-party add-ons you use. Um, and then here, 3D grass requires a season texture switch from the global tab above. Only use 3D grass with custom trees option. So um, in this case, I just leave it on anyway because I really like it. So that's, that's just me. But um, apron detail, you have high normal minimum. So you can um, turn all those cars or get rid of some of those cars if it's an issue. The same thing with the parking lots as well. Here I had all gates selected. So it's some that says random gates. Um, all remaining gates get static jetways, performance impact negligible, um, but all gates. So I had all gates um, here, but I don't know what happened there. And then for those of you who run AES, you have the option to add um, apron, highway, and Orson trains, airport parking, the bridge, everything else. So in this case, none are selected because I use P3D. So that's just my case here. Um, all right, I'm just going to try to go back in and try it one more time and um, see if we can test that one more time. One more time and see if I can get those working. Oh, did I break something? <laughs> Supercell Studios, welcome aboard. I don't think I've seen you aboard. Welcome. And once again, guys, if you're um, joining this Twitch for the first time, um, just a reminder, our website is airdailyx.net. So be sure to check out our website. Okay, let's um, go back and find that Aerosoft thing again one more time. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tam doesn't belong up here, but who cares? Okay. Um, let's reset the system time. Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel. I just really want to try this one more time if I can. The um, I know I, I just copied this plane over from my other installation of P3D, so that's why I'm getting error messages. Um... Royal says, I miss Greg from Jetline Systems. What's going on with Greg? <laughs> Renee says, I miss a Jetline Systems promotion. Yes. All of this is courtesy of Jetline Systems. Otherwise, none of these streams would be possible. None of them. As a matter of fact, since Adi didn't get his promotion, I'm going to give you your promotion right now, Adi. Hang on. Where's the thing at? Ah, that's ugly. I'm going to give Adi the promotion he was looking for right now. What is going on? There we go. Um, let's see here. Here you go, Adi. I'm going to give you your promotion. <laughs> give me a second. Does anyone ever find USBs to be weird? Like you plug it in one way, it doesn't fit, then you turn it around, then it doesn't fit, then you turn it around again, and then it doesn't fit, then you turn it around again, and it fits. Uh, let's see. Capture device. Um, nope, 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 nope. Cancel. Add capture device. There we go. Where is it? There it is. Let's see. Uh, edit. There we go. Let's see here. Is this working? Uh, you can't really see it. It's a little dark there. But uh, essentially, this is your this is your Jetline Systems promotion there, Adi. Unfortunately, um, it's a little dark down here, so you can't really see it too much. But uh, it's all red and lit up like a UFO. So there you go. Fortunately, um, I guess it's a little too dark down there. Let's see here. Try to light that up a little bit. Not really. Anyway, there you go. All red. All right. So I'm sure Greg will come in and find that later on. <laughs> All right. Let's get back uh, into the simulator now. 
Uh, we're getting ready to wrap up here. Just wanted to try one last time and uh, see if I can get the uh, jet bridge working. If not, then that's something I have to figure out later. Oh wow, that light's showing up really odd, isn't it? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not showing this the way it, I mean, that plane is not installed the way it's supposed to be. I just look really hot. Just turn that back on. Okay, let's try the jet bridge one more time. Just gonna slew over there. And by the way, as you can see um, in the upper left hand corner, you can see my frames are still in the 40s with the uh, Aerosoft Airbus here, even though improperly installed. Um, this, of course, is with no AI, but with very high settings. So. Um, to add the AI, I'd have to take down these settings a little bit. All right, here we go. And some nice ground apron textures too, by the way. Let's move up on the gate. Let's try this one more time. And I need to activate FSUI PC, don't I? Yes, I do. All right, here we go. Let's try it one more time. There we go. All right, that's more like it. See, those nice, lovely glass chair bridges do move. <laughs> Leto says Halloween Andre. Yeah. In fact, I'm thinking about putting a couple of green LEDs in there for Christmas. <laughs> we'll see if, uh, if it can outdo the Christmas tree. All right, so there we go. We've got that glass jet bridge moving there, hooked up nicely. And uh, let's see. Let's move it over to another gate for kicks and giggles. Um, we're going to move it one more time. I guess is that just going to stay docked? Uh, we'll move over here. Let's see. I think my first sortie is going to be Copenhagen Oslo. Let's see. There we go. Ah, oh, look at those buildings. Okay. And just to give you something of an idea of what uh, that internal modeling looks like from your flight deck as you pull up to the gate. It's your flight deck environment there. And the jet bridge all hooked up. Uh, let's move over to terminal, is it terminal three? We'll jump over on this side. Where that lovely carpeting is. So it looks like all the jet bridges are working now. Let me just that, control J, there we go. So in this case, if you select all jet bridges, it looks like it, but before I didn't run it in administrator mode. So it looks like I was just getting the random jet bridges. So in this case, um, as you saw, we went back in and uh, make sure we ran, as a, ran it as administrator. And now of course we have all the jet bridges working now. I'm gonna make one more jet bridge test just to make sure. So there we go. All nice and pretty. I should have installed GSX while we were waiting, huh? No, it's too late now. And uh, let's try one more bridge. Uh, I guess we'll try this one over here. And just make sure. You know, it's funny. I have the A319 and I haven't even installed it yet. Can you believe that? So. Um, I've got to take some time and, <laughs> and do that. Okay, here we go. Nope. Let's back it up a little bit more. 
Oh, duh. Right here. Not this one. Closer, maybe. All right, this guy doesn't want to act. Let's try this one. Actually, you know what? I should be looking at the docking system, huh? Because that's probably what I should be doing. Let me see here. Alright, there we go. There we go. I just had to park it in the right spot. There she goes. Very nice. Okay, guys, any more questions? Photo says the scenery looks very well done. Nice features, excellent textures, landscape good. Good frame, uh, <clears throat> good performance, a must buy. I agree, I highly recommend. Uh, so Skylift Xander, um, try taking a look at that control panel again. I think that's gonna fix your, Skyfly Xander, sorry. Uh, that should fix your, um, that should get everything working for you. Um, <clears throat> all right, it's uh, the weekend for Greg, so Greg, I'm sure, is out with the family. Okay, well, folks, I guess that's just going to about do it. I'm going to just check around one more time and see if there's any last questions about Copenhagen. And once again, uh, the scenery is just released today. Look at those uh, reflective textures. Very good looking texture. All right, so that's going to pretty much wrap up this one. Hopefully I covered everything. Um, I believe I did ask if there was something that um, anyone uh, from, from some of you who fly out of this airport often, if there was anything I missed, but I didn't see any comments on that, so I guess I caught pretty much everything. Today says perfect demo. Uh, then it says do some VFR flying with joystick. Cam Kappa, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Frat, there you go. Good to see all you guys aboard. So that's pretty much going to wrap up Copenhagen. So um, I think the guys did a very good job in terms of providing screenshots. As a matter of fact, let's go take a look at, um, let's see here. Oops, wrong one. Um, The only thing I didn't look at was the price. <laughs> for obvious reasons. It doesn't matter for me, huh? Uh, let's see. Fly. Uh, let's see here. Fly Tampa. Copenhagen. What does this baby cost? Oh, they added some nice um, pictures, too, for the screenshots. good by scenery let's see here yep, that's the one we want did that say fs9 oh there's an x there i was gonna say what okay here we go so copenhagen 35 bucks not bad not bad for that large coverage area and for a mega airport i'd say that's that's about right that's about right I mean, you see a lot of mega airports, and they cost about the same, but they don't include the entire surrounding. So, thirty-five bucks is a good deal. So, anyway, um, there's a few pictures there on the uh, on the uh, product page, but hopefully, the live demo helps you see it a little bit closer, a little bit better. A lot of attention to detail. Obviously, I go into more detail regarding features and things in my written reviews, but this is more um, a purpose to just allow you to see it in real time right after, so that uh, if there's any qualms or concerns, although when it comes to fly temp, I don't think anyone has any concerns about buying a fly temp scenery right off the bat. Um, they, I think they've earned our trust enough over the years that uh, they probably don't even have to release any product screenshots at all, and we'd probably just whip off the credit cards the minute they say something was released. Like, I'm, I bet you $1,000 right now. If, let's just say, for example, fly temp, uh, 
um, tomorrow said, we just did Johannesburg, now for sale. Sorry, we don't have any product screenshots. I think half of us would just pop down the credit cards anyway. So I think they've earned our trust um, over the years. But nevertheless, um, if it helps a little bit more to just have these sort of uh, previews um, ahead of buying, then, um, you know, glad to be of assistance. It's a terrific scenery. Um, I think it looks absolutely splendid for a Flight Tampa product. I think it's spot on. And, um, you know, a, a big, a big, uh, 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 tip my hat off to Emilios and uh, is it Yannick? Sorry, I know I'm probably getting it wrong. Sorry, um, for a very, very uh, job well done here. And um, uh, what else can I possibly say? I mean, finally we have Copenhagen. So um, you know, obviously I'm sure I'm sure the boys are busy uh, with customer support and um, you know watching those bean counters. But um, certainly there seemed to be a lot of excitement on Air Daily X and uh, on Facebook as well. I noticed. Uh, so here it is. It's ready for purchase. Thirty-five bucks, and you are ready to fly. So once again, um, a big thanks to the guys at Fly Tampa, and uh, really just a huge thank you uh, to Emilios uh, for just you know putting in all the hard work. I know I'm, I'm always stating his name, but obviously it's it's a team effort, a group effort, and uh, really thanks so much for the team for just uh, finally uh, going through all the rigors of uh, finally bringing this to fruition. It's been a number of years. Uh, I remember. Um, Originally, Emilio sent some initial um, uh, exclusives over, and we were all got excited about them. And then uh, after that, a lot of things were just redone from scratch once it, once it became a Flight Tampa product. And so, I mean, it's just a billion times better. So it's finally here. I think the wait was worth it. Uh, and I think just the quality has been pulled off quite impressively. So with internal modeling of boot. So I keep whining, whining, and whining about this interior modeling thing, and more and more developers are doing it, and I just think that's so crazy. But nevertheless, uh, it it, uh, it all pays off, and it all comes together so well, especially for those of you who never leave the virtual cockpit. You know, that gives you a little bit something more to just immerse yourself in, in terms of the airport environment, and um, I think it all comes together just perfectly here. So. Uh, 